We're gonna wait for YouTube to catch up. Hello, everybody. Happy week before Thanksgiving for the United States. Uh, I know it's different. <laughs> Lots of countries don't celebrate it. Canada is a different time, but howdy, howdy, folks. Uh, so while we let folks trickle in, hopefully things I've set up are working. Give me a, a hot moment here. Just want to see if uh, if something's working. It might not be yet. Huh? Oh, I don't think the nightbot I set up yet is working. <laughs> we might have to do this the hard way. All right, so we got we got things and stuff to talk about, namely algae, and then um, a few a few other things. So. Let me see. All right, so um, we're gonna just a heads up. Ah, Nightbot is alive. <laughs> Fantastic. <clears throat> okay, so couple things. Once we get into question and answer, for those who are here early, as always, just at Bentley Pasco. Uh, and then that makes it really easy for me to see your question. Before I talk about algae, really quickly, I will answer Pear Tree Aquatics' question. Uh, I've talked to the folks at Fluval about an Aquas guy, but I haven't uh, gotten any confirmation that they're going to do it, or and they haven't done it so far. So, uh, yeah, I, I haven't... Um, I haven't done anything. It's just a matter of uh, patience. You know, COVID's inter in just interrupting everybody. Human malware sucks, but um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, let's let's talk algae for a little bit, and then I'll get into some other things, and we'll do question and answers and all kind of stuff. So my topic today was: Can you actually stop algae? And and, and yes, for those asking, uh, I am at the tail end of the congestion portion of a head cold. Um, we had a, like this cold snap, and when weather goes like one temperature dips like 20 degrees and then swings back up, I almost always get a head cold these days. And that's part of getting old is just the body can't handle it as well. Um, so I'm, I'm to the point where most of this is is done the weekend was actually really really rough on me uh as far as like sounding significantly worse than i do now it wasn't that bad it's just like a lot of pressure in my nose and all that kind of stuff you know fun fun times um so you'll you'll hear that in the video i shot because <laughs> uh, yeah I, you know I, I know i don't sound so great and I, i'm very clearly not able to breathe through my nose so like unless i was listening to the audio and i was like i can only clean it up so well before it starts uh, either one, I spend like 10, 15 hours just working on audio, or B, I, uh, I, I start messing it up. So you, you, you'll hear me like huffing and puffing a little bit because I can't breathe through here at all. I have to breathe through my mouth. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk algae. And uh, <laughs> someone actually mentioned this in chat. Do you actually want to completely stop algae? And I think that's a very relevant question. It's actually a question that. I would say the answer to that is no. And let me first explain that. And then we'll talk about why um, why algae is good and, and kind of ways to fight excessive algae, right? There is a difference between an acceptable amount of algae and, like, really bad algae. So algae like your dust algae that gets on little bits of it gets on your wood or your rocks or your glass uh, that's easily cleaned if you want to take the time to clean your hardscape. But off the glass, it's pretty easily cleaned. You know, a mag float, any of those kind of things, they do a great job as long as you're diligent about it. Don't let it, like, really gather up too long. <laughs> Don't do what I do and conduct crazy algae experiments. But um, that's, that's a sign of health in your system, right? There's... There are certain signs that we look for. Like when I'm doing a new tank, right? 
you can test and test and test the water, but one of the things that tells you that you're on the right track is initial algae growth on either your glass or your hardscape, right? That usually tells you that, like, things are starting to proliferate in the system, you're starting to get bacterial cultures, you're starting to get nutrients and all that kind of stuff moving through your water that can allow algae to grow. Now, algae being present doesn't necessarily mean that your water is perfectly safe yet, but it means that you're on the right track. Diatome algae, that brown algae that most people don't like the look of, if you uh, if you have really, really hungry eating plecos, you can get quite a bit of it, right, from all the extra detritus and, and food that they eat and how messy they are. That's another sign. It just tells you where your system is in one way, shape, or form, right? You're going to get some amount of diatom algae almost guaranteed every time you start a tank. It lets you know what stage of the tank's health you're in, right? That entire nitrate cycle, algae is like an indicator of where you are in that cycle, in a sense. Like, you've, you've, you've hit certain milestones when you start seeing algae show up. So in that regard, algae can be very good. Also, if you have any kind of algae grazer, some amount of continual dust or glass algae and stuff like that is good because it gives them a food source. When we're doing shrimp, we want algae, right? We want algae for them to constantly, constantly feed on. Then there's the algae we don't like because it's unsightly. Right, so things like hair algae, a lot of people don't like blackbeard algae. I actually like the way blackbeard algae looks, but it interferes with plants. So <laughs> I tend to fight it because I don't want it screwing up my plants. But I like the way it looks on like hardscape surfaces. And even when you can get like that carpet look when it starts propagating through your substrate, where it looks almost like a carpeting plant, I actually like the way that stuff looks personally. Plenty of people hate blackbeard algae, can't stand the look of it, can't stand it being anywhere in their tank. They look at it as like one of the worst pests, period. And I get it. It can be really tough to get rid of. So with these 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 algaes that we look at as a, 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 a plight, uh, a problem, an issue, how do we fight it in the first place? How do we be proactive, Right. Uh, in chat, Crenshaw Jamaica just asked, does ambient light cause algae too? Yes, it can, if it's excessive amounts. And this is one of the things we want to take in. So like the, there's basically like a triangle, right? Think of this like a, uh, your triforce of how algae survives. There are three things that influence algae. Fertilizer, light, food. Okay. And, and, there's a more scientific way to describe this, but this is the way that we approach it. If we have too little fertilizer for our plants, our plants ain't, are, are not able to grow enough, and something will get out of balance in the tank, and algae will start to take over. If we feed our fish too much, we will cause extra detritus, which tends to cause mostly extra phosphates. Algae will latch onto that and take over. If we have way too much light for our tank, algae will latch onto that and take over. So at any one of these points, if there's an excess or in some cases too little in the case of fertilizer, this can be basically the, the one thing that algae needs in order to outcompete plants if you have a planted tank. Or in the case of tanks with, you know, no plants, no nothing, maybe you just got some, a broken pirate ship and some plastic plants in there, right? We're, we're going, uh, no plants at all, the, the SpongeBob SquarePants pineapple hut. We can get algae very easily in those because we don't have anything to fight the algae off. And so usually the way that we do this is lots of water changes and, and going with the minimal feeding we need necessary and keeping the lights kind of low, using low light. So where does, where do we figure out what we've done wrong? Let's say that we have an algae outbreak. We, we thought we set everything up right. 
we get through we get through the the cycle and the plants are looking good and then all of a sudden bam green hair algae, green hair algae just out of nowhere right what do we do to figure out the problem because like the the easy answer is like i'll oh, just go get some like pondy algae killer or i uh, just uh i'll just put hydrogen peroxide all over the place or you know whatever one of those algae killing treatments or maybe it's like i'll go buy siamese algae eaters i'll go buy florida flagfish i'll go buy any one of these things that eats hair algae and let the 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 wildlife do it for me right that's fine if you want to let the wildlife do it for you that's fine just be prepared for when some of those wildlife will no longer eat algae because they get too big and they get lazy or they only want protein because they're preparing to spawn um be be aware that some of those fish can get kind of aggressive or others will only eat certain types of algae if you're doing it right like me personally I like using fish to solve algae issues when I have horrible outbreaks because usually it's something that will take months and during those months of time while those algae eaters are working on things, I'm slowly tuning the tank and getting it where I need it to be to prevent that outbreak going forward in the future, right? So let's talk about that part, tuning the tank, fixing your problem, okay? Number one almost always we feed our fish too much <laughs> igor anonymous in chat twice a day i tell myself this is the time i'm not gonna overfeed never happens <laughs> right like we we are our fish bag right fish bag and bag and bag the, it's the one thing once they figure out human equals food they will beg and beg and beg for food they seem like they have bottomless stomachs especially if you're a rainbow fish keeper or a cichlid keeper they will seem like they can eat for an eternity <laughs> or goldfish goldfish might be some of the worst right they'll just always look for something so the number one thing is we usually feed too much food and it tends to lead to an excess in phosphates which plants don't absorb a ton of phosphates so because they don't absorb a ton of phosphates you can get excesses in the water and algae is a single cell organism it is extremely simple it is it doesn't need much so it'll find that one thing that's in excess and it'll latch onto it and it'll go hog wild on it so very typically that's what we're dealing with so how do we fix the the, the overfeeding problem now scientifically speaking jeff chambers and chat just mentioned this typically most fish need anywhere between one and three percent of their total body mass per day in food but fish in the wild don't always eat every single day so one of the ways that i personally approach when i start seeing algae outbreaks and i know that i have a tendency to give too much food right um i'm, I'm very often a lot like a uh, Corey from Aquarian Co-op has shown, like, I don't mind throwing extra food in because it leaves extra food for, like, for babies and the extra fish, the shire fish, all that kind of stuff. Instead of feeding every single day, feed every other day. Now, there's a twofold approach to this, right? When we teach our fish that they're not going to eat every single day, but food will come, that can make it so if we go away for a weekend and we don't have, like, an auto feeder or something like that, our fish will be all right. They'll be used to going a day, maybe even two days without food and know that food's going to come. I don't need to like freak out and start eating everything else in the tank, right? This, this can, this can work even with African cichlids, even with aggressive fish. Not always, but it can help. Now let's say we, we cut our food in half. We're feeding every other day and we do this for two weeks and the algae just doesn't change at all. Step two, we're probably looking at an issue with too much light. So if we have a light that can dim, we want to pull the power down. Let's say we've got a Fluval 3.0, right? And we, we're, in, we're in the automatic mode and we have our lights come on. They, they sunrise for an hour and then they go to 100% everything. And then they, they're on for eight hours and then they sunset for an hour. We're probably blasting way too much light. 
So the first thing I would do is I would turn the percentage down to 50% of whatever it's set to. And then monitor for two weeks. But if we can't dim it, let's say we have a light that just goes on and off, then the difference is if I have it on for eight hours a day, I'm only going to have it on for four hours a day. And you need to control it with a timer. If you're doing it just I manually walk in and I turn stuff on or I turn stuff off, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, that that makes it very difficult to pinpoint the problem because you're not always going to be perfect. That's why we use timers, those Wi-Fi timers, like the, well, I personally like the Casa ones, but there's a million different other ones out there. Those Wi-Fi timers are amazing. So if you have your lights on for eight hours a day and they only go on and off, put it down to four hours a day, half your light. Your plants can handle several days with no light at all, like black full blackout periods, right? This is one of the ways that we, we deal with really problematic algae is we black the entire tank out for several days. Let's say we do that. We we half our we half our light. We go for several. We go for two three weeks. We're still not seeing an issue. Then I think what we're running into at that point is we are probably not giving enough fertilizer to our plants. They're not able, or we have too slow of growing plants in order to combat the algae itself. So sometimes that involves like let's say we do like nothing but Anubius and Java fern. These are slow-growing plants. They don't need a lot. So in order to fight algae off, what you do is you typically go get something like floating plants that are big nitrate absorbers, or you get something like a, a water sprite or a water wisteria, Pogostamon octopus, any of those super nitrate sponges. And you get an amount of that, and you kind of have to manicure it to keep it so it doesn't go crazy in your tank, but you let that absorb all the excess stuff in your tank to try and kind of reset everything, fight that algae off. And then once we've tackled the algae, we can start slowly tapering that stuff back and trying to work on the balance so that the, the plants can naturally handle it and you only get that little bit of algae like on your, on your hardscape or on your glass. You get that little bit every week before your water change. You just clean it off and you're done. If you want to clean the hardscape, usually I just deal with the glass, right? That's me personally... <laughs> If there's a little bit of algae in my hardscape, I personally don't care. I look at that as an okay thing. So what if we've we've tried all three of these things and somehow we're still getting algae? The last answer, and it, it plays into the excess kind of like feeding, but it's feeding from a different angle, is looking at your substrate. If you are using a cheap sand... Play, playground sand, pool filter sand, any of that. Excess silicates in the water can lead to algae. Especially, although it is not technically algae, I'm going to drink water. <clears throat> and then that head cold is saying hello. <laughs> um, but blue-green algae, so right, uh, cyanobacteria, Silicates especially will promote cyanobacteria, but can also promote other forms of algae. It just acts as another type of food that's there. Bentley, I'm not using sand. I've got Equicomplete or I've got, you know, whatever substrate in there. Maybe I have a bare bottom tank. Last one in chat just got mentioned. Test your water out of the tap. You could very well have nitrates in your base water that you're bringing into the system to begin with. And because there's nitrates in the water and we're fertilizing on top of it, we're putting too much nitrates into the water. We're putting an excessive amount. <laughs> Nightbot went a little, a little crazy. <laughs> this is hard, Clyde. <laughs> I appreciate it. I've got to I've got to do some settings on Nightbot. I need it for later. I promise you're not in trouble. <laughs> anyway, um, so as as I mentioned, DC Kyle put this perfectly. Sometimes you're giving too much of an additional something. It could be nitrates, it could be phosphates. So sometimes we have to go down this rabbit hole. We try everything, right? We put, I put I put floating plants in it. 
I did this, I, I did that, I finally took them all out, and it just came right back. The problem might be all the way down to our actual tap water coming out of the tap, and us needing to go in and test that so that we can figure out maybe it's got nitrates, maybe it's got phosphates, maybe it's got something in there that that algae is latching onto. The big thing is taking your time and figuring out what is there. Now, a, a last thing that can also do this, if we're going like black water, right? We got lots of tannins or we got big pieces of driftwood, especially Malaysian driftwood where all those tannins get in the water and it slowly breaks down. Well, that's adding more and more organic waste to your water. And if you don't have the plant load or you're not like really diligent about cleaning some of that stuff up, algae can latch onto that. Now, when pH gets to a certain level, algae has a lot of trouble, right? Certain types of algae. But we need to keep all these things in mind. In the end, if we see algae, unsightly amounts, keep in mind, like a little bit of glass algae, like even this tank has algae and I'm just lazy and don't clean it very much. <laughs> clean it very much because I it's not a display tank it's there for me and I don't really care about glass algae all that much it really doesn't bother me unless I like need to film something right and then I go through and I thoroughly clean glass as best I can but if we start seeing big amounts of hair algae or blackbeard algae and we don't want the blackbeard algae uh, you're dealing with cyanobacteria there's some excess in the water and we need to figure out what that excess is and address it. That's the ancient lesson here. Can we ever truly stop algae? No. You're basically always going to have some small amount of algae happen in your tank. Even like your green aquas where they're in, in your, your ADA tanks where it's like super amounts of CO2 and like this meticulous maintenance. You still see George Farmer breaking out the toothbrush, cleaning off his, his hardscape from little bits of algae. It still happens, even to some of those people that do really meticulous levels of maintenance, high levels of CO2, these high-tech, super great tanks that are nicely balanced and blah, blah, blah. They still get algae. Everyone gets algae. The difference is only getting that little bit of algae and not getting massive outbreaks, right? Controlling an outbreak is all about figuring out what's in excess and curtailing it back into a manageable and controlled state. And for me personally, like going in using, uh, you know, hydrogen peroxide, like the whole tank method, the one-two punch that's on planettank.net, which is a fantastic article if you follow it perfectly um using you know like the the algae killer pond treatment type stuff any of those things yeah you can do all this stuff but you're never going to win the war so once you accept that as long as i keep slowly paying attention to what's going on in my tank and when i start seeing the signs it means i need to address little things You'll just win all the battles you need to do, and you'll just get that little bit of easily maintainable algae. And that looks natural. That's the kind of stuff that most people look and they're like, yeah, that looks like that looks like a river. That looks like a lake. That looks like this, right? That's perfectly fine. Don't worry about that stuff. It's when it becomes an excess that we need to start addressing problems. And once you figure out once you kind of figure out how to do that on your own, trust me, you're like your aquarist game jumps exponentially in your capability to do things. I think people who figure out how to address algae on their own, because I get questions about algae all the time and I do my best to help. When you figure out that process and that like that tinkering mentality of how to figure out the balance just right for your tank, because my tank is different than your tank. All these problems have little differences that no one can give you the perfect answer for. You kind of, you can have a starting point and work from there. That helps. But eventually, you will have to figure that part out. So, once you learn that, I'm telling you, it, it, it's a huge leap in your ability to do things as an Aquarius. And I think once you understand that part of algae, you also learn a lot about plants. Because you re one of those things that's in there is your, your light and fertilizer balance. 
When you look at those things and you figure those things out, you can very quickly figure out if I'm getting lots of algae, I'm doing something wrong with my plants. And once I get that in gear, you'll suddenly realize you start getting better at growing plants and keeping plants super healthy and looking lush. Because once you figure those balances out that keep the algae under control, you're doing it right for the plants in our planet tanks, for those folks that love planet tanks. And, and trust me, once you figure that algae thing out, you'll get better at plants just like that. It's like that. It, it's something that clicks in your brain. And once you figure it out, and you're still going to get algae outbreaks, I do. I have an algae outbreak happening right now in the Guppy Mansion of, of some like minor blackbeard algae. And I'm trying to figure out if what I've put in the tank is going to be enough or if I need to like go pick up some Amano shrimp or go pick up some Neurite snails. I'm not sure yet. I got to give it a couple weeks. And if I keep seeing the algae grow worse and worse, if it stays where it is, I'm not worried about it. But if it keeps going more and more, I have to keep addressing it. So that's my, my rant on algae. Can we actually stop it? No, not even those, those fancy uh, oxygenating twin star things that cost you like $9 billion for no reason. They don't stop algae. They might help minimize it, but they don't stop it. Anybody who tells you they have the magic solution to stop algae is selling you something and is lying. Now, they might be reducing algae. Yes. Can they minimize it? Of course. But you don't need fancy tools to do that. Patience and understanding your own tank will get you there and keep you there for a long term. Okay, so let's talk about the cool things. Uh, let's see. Excel is a magic solution. <laughs> Excel helps for some folks. That's that's very true. Uh, so there were some questions uh, in chat. I want to grab them really fast. Uh, so asking, asking me to talk about anoxic filters. I personally am not super knowledgeable on anoxic filters. So me talking about them would basically be saying, I am not the best source to give you information for that. And I think it's important when people acknowledge they're a bad source of information for something because they don't know it that well. <laughs> okay. I think that's really important. Uh, as for Dr. Novak, um, I, I know the name. I haven't like really in depth looked at that particular person. I'm sure given they're a doctor, they probably know a lot more than I do. I'm just some chucklehead aquarist hobbyist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, so for people who have questions, you can go ahead and start putting questions in chat at Bentley Pasco makes it super easy. You can ask about algae. You can ask about, uh, what the weather's like. I don't really care. You can ask pretty much any question and that doesn't bother me at all. Your water Sprite isn't growing faster than the algae. More nitrates. <laughs> water Sprite eats up a ton of nitrates. Ton, ton, ton. So if it's not growing very much, it probably isn't getting enough. Um, I've dealt with that problem personally, and yeah. <laughs> okay, so a couple things I want to talk about while questions filter in, then I'll start answering as many of those as I can. Uh, number one, for those of you who are looking to buy blue Hawaiian Moscow guppies from Redfish Bluefish, Are we paying attention now? I hope you are. Uh, his website, which is redfishbluefish.shop, is going to go live Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time. I better make sure I got that right. I'm going to make sure it's not 9. Right? <laughs> 8 a.m. I have it right here. And more importantly, more importantly... If you enter that code, stay awesome as one word in nice capital letters, you'll get 10% off any fish purchase you make, including Blue Hawaiian Moscow guppies. So I'll put that, don't worry, it'll be in the community tab too. That'll go there. Uh, full disclosure, I do get some money <laughs> for the for purchases made through him um it, it's i get a small affiliate amount I, I actually might change it to where i just get a gift card and i give that away <laughs> i haven't really figured out what i want to do with it because i don't care about, about this 
I don't care about that part. I much more prefer to support his business. Just like when I sold him my fish, I sold them very, very cheap so that we could make sure that they got sold very, very cheap to you guys. So they're nice and affordable. So with that being said, Thursday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, his site goes live. Uh, I know that there is some number of guppy pairs left. Should be at least 15. Um, cool things. It's going to be like a supreme drop for a fish. <laughs> Chris, that's hysterical. Uh, and, and a note for those who are local, um, if you contact Jason over at Redfish Bluefish, he is open to setting up by appointments actually coming into his shop and doing things in person. So keep that in mind for those who are local. If you want to actually go see his shop, he's doing it by appointment only for right now. Um, you just have to email him and get in touch with him and, and square his stuff away. The big thing is just make sure you're on time, please. <laughs> you know, Because if he's going to take time out of his day to specifically meet you for the shop side of things as opposed to doing the stuff that he needs to do or like, you know, being a dad, all those things. Just common courtesy, right? <laughs> common courtesy. Second thing. Um... Aquarium Co-op, the, the lovely folks there, specifically Miss Lizzie Block, who I can't remember her actual title, but she's basically in charge of all sorts of uh, reaching out to creators and setting up projects and all this cool stuff. Uh, apparently they do like little creator packages where they send out just some random swag to creators. And, and this doesn't mean that they're the brand ambassadors. I think that's the title they used because I'm not one. But they sent me a, a package of fun stuff. And as you guys know, at least the people who've been here for a while. Whenever I get free things from a company, uh, I give stuff away. I, I I feel like any time my channel has done something that warrants me getting random free things, I should probably give at least some of it away. So with that being said, we will be doing a giveaway tonight. Here's how you enter. Hashtag co-op in chat should as long as I set my night bot up correctly <laughs> should enter you you only get one entry don't spam it please but here's what we're going to give away I got one of these sweet Murphy hats we're going to give this bad boy away and I'm pretty sure that I'll get yelled at by Lizzie for giving stuff away that they wanted me to have, but I have the aquarium co-op hat that I really like. And, uh, yeah, there's that. And then they gave me two of these really awesome towels, so I'm going to give one away. Now, admittedly, there are a couple things I'm keeping. Uh, they sent me a mug, which... I just don't want to ship a mug because I'm too worried about breaking it. <laughs> so I'm not going to ship the mug. And they gave me some coasters, which I'm going to keep. <laughs> if only because I'm going to use them eventually in my, my fish room. Uh, you do have to be in the United States. I, I can't ship internationally because then I'd be paying like $100 to ship you a hat. And I'm sorry. I love you a lot. Uh, but here's what I can do. Here's what I can do. International folks can enter, okay? As long as you have a Amazon site that works for you. And instead, what I will give you is a gift card for the retail value of whichever item you won to Amazon to get yourself something nice. I would prefer if you get something fish related. But that's the deal. I'm going to give stuff away. That's high roll. So... Technically, international can enter without me having to ship stuff to you. All right, let's do questions. That gets all my stuff out of the way. That gets all my stuff out of the way. I actually like... Uh, I, I really miss the blue towel. I love that thing. I have one. Uh, so, Zelf, not sure if my message went through. Did Greater Seattle Aquarium Society remove the vid for the egg layer lecture? Yes, they only leave them up for one week, roughly. Uh, it's actually specifically leave them for five days and then they take them down and make them only available to greater Seattle Aquarium Society members. So 
for now, it is down, um, and it's only to members. So for any of those for right now, make sure you watch them within the first three or four days. That, that's kind of the unfortunate part. If I had a way to like rip it down and, and get it to you, I would, but um, my club would probably get really angry at me if I did that. Uh, Ninja Storm MC, and if I missed your question, just go ahead and put it in chat with the app Bentley Pasco. I, I'll answer as much as I can. How should I clean small algae coatings on plants? It's a fish tank, so I know I can't do big water changes for it. Well, I mean, you can do relatively large water changes if you need to. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, depending on how... How, uh, how long the algae has been there and how tough the leaf is, you might be able to go in with like a, a toothbrush and lightly rub it off. Especially if you have one of the little uh, mechanical ones that rotates or like has the vibration to it, right? Like a Sonicare style. Um, those can help quite a lot. If that doesn't get off, try to get good growth that doesn't have anything and just trim and be willing to let the thing regrow. Like, I've done that before. I've trimmed Anubius leaves off and let them regrow because they had too much dust algae on them because they pushed too much light over, over the Anubius. Uh, it depends. Really, finally, stuff that gets really, really troublesome and can be very difficult without, like, being willing to sp spray some hydrogen peroxide or something like that. Uh, you can also get right down on it and get a pipette with some Excel and get Excel right directly on the algae. That'll help kill it. And that... <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, man. I almost felt like my voice was going to crack. Congestion is a fun thing. Uh, if you do have something like autosynclus or something, when you kill that algae off, very often they will go and eat it a lot like they would diatom algae. It can help clean it up. Or if you got shrimp, whatever. Makes it easier. Um, Parachute Aquatics. Would you like me to send you my 24-inch Aqua Sky when I tear down my 29-gallon? Don't take this as as anything insulting, but no. And let me explain why. Um, I'm really terrible about shipping things, and I get really paranoid about lights breaking in shipping. So I, I'm worried that between you sending it to me, me using it for a while, and sending it back to you, that it might break. Two, I actually really specifically want to test the AquaSky on a 40-gallon breeder, so I need a 36-inch, because I want to compare it directly to my, my most common experience with the plant 3.0 light, so that I can give people a really, really accurate comparison and review. Because I know those 3.0s on a, a 40 breeder like the back of my hand at this point. So being able to be, give people a toe-to-toe a -toe analysis of how those lights work and settings based on that analysis is really important to me. So that, that's why I, I appreciate the offer. Don't get me wrong. I actually really appreciate the offer. But I, I want to go really specific with this. I <laughs> sold your 36 hits three months ago. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I actually probably would have bought it had I known. Because <laughs> I'm a psycho. Ah, oh, you're... Killing me, Nightbot. <laughs> Hold on. I, I gotta go, like, tell Nightbot to chill out. <laughs> I'll do it in a different stream. I want to answer questions. <laughs> Jeez. Master photographer, I appreciate you. It's it's getting hardcore. Okay. Kelly Foreman, thanks for the super chat. For cold medicine or chocolate, same thing. <laughs> I'm actually doing pretty good. I'm on the tail end. I've been using uh, mostly like your Mucinexes just to break up all the stuff. Um, and lots of hot showers has been helping quite a bit. But um, I have been using like some Sudafed too just to help with the initial congestion. I had... At first, I, I, like, the first day where I felt it starting to come on and my last day where I, we have really, really strict policies at my work, right? So <laughs> Microsoft is really strict about this stuff. So if you have even a runny nose, you are not allowed to enter the building. And they put you on a quarantine until you've been 72 hours without any symptoms. So right now, uh, as of basically yesterday, I, I have to work from home which is kind of a struggle for me. Uh, it actually takes me more time to do lots of things at home, so I work longer at home than I do in the office. 
<laughs> as terrible as that sounds. But, um, yeah. So they're, they're super paranoid about it, which is good, right? It's, it's for the health of everybody. It's to be safe. We want to make sure that nobody risks anything with human malware. Stuff is really gnarly. But I, the day I knew things were coming on, and like I told my boss, it's like, hey, I'm going to leave now. I'll finish working from home. Uh, I just, I feel it's coming on and I know, I know what policy is. I need to get out of here. And, uh, I, I went to our medicine cabinet. <laughs> I, I like casually, uh, acquired a good amount of decongestion <laughs> because the stuff that they stock at our, our office is pretty good. So I, I made sure that I had a little bit of it. Uh, I think I gave myself like basically two days worth of, <laughs> uh, also, I was kind of worried because we're in flu and cold season, right? That a bunch of people had to kind of rushed with the new lockdowns in the in Washington State that just started. That people had been rushing for everything and like freaking out. Uh, like like uh, our Costco's our Costco's are sold out of toilet paper again because people are freaking out for no reason. Thanks, human malware. You're the best at testing my patience. Anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. Other questions? There are some other good ones in here that I want to make sure I get to. Uh, from EJ Fishes, just great video with Nick from Shrimpy Business. Dude, Nick is such, such a wonderful guy. Um, and his shrimp are fantastic. You're going to get to see them this Saturday. Video, we'll talk about those guys this Saturday. Um, they are, man, their, their color is so good. The ones I got from him, it's incredible. And, uh, yes, I paid uh, full price for them. <laughs> there is even like a 10% off thing on his site that I saw and then didn't use. <laughs> I just paid him full retail <laughs> because, uh, I want to support his business. He's a, he's a super dude. Awesome dude. Uh, Paratree Aquatics, lots of whiskey, right? I may or may not have had a little. I do not drink very much. I drink very, 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 very small amounts. Very, very infrequently. Uh, it's mostly just because... There's lots of histories of alcoholism in my family, so I kind of uh, try not to feed the beast, so to speak. But it's one of, I'm one of those guys who are like, I'll have like a drink. Maybe once a month. <laughs> I drink so little. And most of my friends don't drink, so I try to be very respectful around them and not drink near them. You got guys like Corey and Joel, like they don't drink. I don't drink anywhere near them, right? It's just a, it's a courtesy thing. Okay. And then there was another question. When human malware is over... So in like 2025 at this rate, right? Um, will I be going to Aquashella, Chicago? I will at very minimum go to the next Aquashella, Chicago. Should be the very next one. Whenever that actually happens. So I, I actually had planned to go to Aquashella, Chicago this year. But then... Uh, you know, human malware said hello and said, no, no, you're not going to. And, and no one's going to, in fact. So good luck, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of those things. So my goal is to go to uh, the very next Aquashella Chicago. I think that's the one fish convention I'm going to try to do. Unless the uh, Canadian rainbow fish oriented fish connection uh, convention connection, geez, happens. So, um, and one thing that I will be doing, just a heads up, whenever this happens, the first, like, Aquashella type convention I go to, um, I'm going to be bringing some free custom swag. It'll be the first time I give away any kind of merchandise whatsoever, and it'll be the only merchandise I will have, and it will be free. So, you know, little appreciation for folks that show up. Just a little little thank you because my reason to go there is purely to be able to interact with folks like you guys in chat. I, I love that part of this hobby and I really can't wait. So yeah. Do, 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 do. Make sure I got here. Uh, Clyde, when you have an arowana, does length matter more than the gallons? Footprint matters more than gallons. So, it, arowanas in general are a top water species. They very rarely go low in a tank. They stay very high in your water. So, having the length by depth, front to back, that big footprint matters. You could have a super long tank that's only like 13 inches front to back, and that's not enough for a big arowana. But if you have, 
you know, you could have like a 300 gallon tank that's 40 inches tall. That that Air One is not going to use any of that tank. But if you have a 300 gallon tank that's long and good, has a good depth front to back, but isn't very tall, like it's only 12 inches tall, it's going to give lots of swim space for that arowana. So when you start getting arowana, start getting big. You know, you're like two foot and three foot arowanas. Is they're going to because they get big. You need a lot of swim space as far as footprint is concerned. Length, depth. Height really doesn't matter to an arowana. Really doesn't. It, like 12 inches is enough. You might want to go 16 to 18 just to be safe, but really you do not need very much. Uh, DC Kyle. Bentley, will you be a regular provider of fish to redfish, bluefish? Yes. Um, as often as I can for right now, our current um, fish on the, like, Jason wants to carry them list is the Blue Hawaiian Moscow Guppies for however many I'm willing to release because I'm greedy and I don't like giving very many of them away. <laughs> and uh, then also Wabin Mooster Plecos. So the Honeycomb and Cistrus Pleco, I have... It's like 25 or 30 babies right now that are growing up. Um, they're all roughly an inch. I want to get them a little bit bigger just so they ship a little easier. They're easier to net that way. Um, but those guys will also be going. And hopefully my adults breed soon. I actually watched my female like darting around between two different caves of adult males. Like messing around. And I have two females. There's one that likes to tease both of them. And they're like too dumb to figure out what they're doing right now. Because they just moved to a different tank uh, not too long ago. They, get, they have a nice 30 breeder to themselves. And yeah, they're, they, they're kind of dumb about it. <laughs> uh, okay, there's a great question here from Steven. What's the relationship between CO2 and algae types? Does it directly inhibit some types? So the way that CO2 realistically inhibits algae is it increases the capability for your plants to suck up extra nutrients and to process more and more light and photosynthesize, photosynthesize more and more, right? So that, that photosynthetic process is how they absorb more and more and more of those nutrients. So really what you're looking for is the CO2 is to boost your plants so that your plants fight the algae off more. Carbon does not directly kill algae. What kills algae in like our liquid carbon products is a chemical called glutaraldehyde which has almost nothing to do with carbon itself, but it is an algicide amongst many, many other things. You can get just glutaraldehyde on its own, although it can be extremely poisonous and it's in very, very small doses in like your XLs and stuff like that, but that is actually what's doing all the algae killing work. Uh, Pear Tree Aquatics, yes, that's correct. Bentley.pasco at gmail.com is my email. If for some reason I don't answer your question tonight, folks, shoot me an email over there. Of course, Sim, supporting free merch. Thanks, man. Uh, and I, I'm probably also for just as a heads up, whenever it gets to that point, if you are a channel member, might even be anywhere in the world. We'll see. <laughs> I need, I need to, I need to make sure I do things right. I will probably send that same merch out to every channel member. Just my way to say thanks. It will happen at some point. I promise you. And you'll know well ahead of time, so if people want to try and jump on the bandwagon just for merch, they can. Okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't want to force, like, only people who come to an event, but it might be, like, one thing is event only, and the second thing goes to everybody. Who knows? I might do something crazy. I haven't figured it out quite yet. I just know I'm going to do something. Because I want to. Uh, so, uh, Garen, in chat, just so you know, redfishbluefish.shop comes live Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So, wait for that. Just wait. It'll come live. Just keep it keep it there. I'm going to put it up in the community tab with all the details. Don't worry. Uh, just a reminder, we're getting close to the end of the stream. If you want to win some cool things, hashtag co-op and chat. That'll qualify you. You do have to be present to win. Don't worry. Yes, Priscilla, I'll give you extra. But that's just because I love you, not because you're a member. <laughs> uh, okay, let me make sure I don't miss too many questions. 
Uh, Ninja Storm MC. Four days ago, I started a 50 gallon Dutch style tank. I used about 30 tissue culture pots to fully plant it. Would every other day 50% water changes be okay for the fish? Five Endler guppies in there for now. Um, so, in theory, yes. The big thing is it depends on your water. So, if you have like. If you're doing RO water, for example and you're remineralizing it, then yeah, the difference won't really matter to them. But if you have like really soft water and, you, and you're and you using crushed coral to buffer it to slowly get it where those guppies need, changing water that often will soften the water a lot and it could cause health, health issues with the endlers. So it's kind of all about your, your water. Um, if you happen to know just like your your water, your general hardness, your KH, all that kind of stuff off the, off the top of your head, and the difference between that and what is going to be in that tank and how they're doing now, it should be fine. But it, as long as it's close enough, right? It, you might, instead of doing 50% a day, and look at like 30% a day. It's a little safer that way. But in theory, 50% every couple of days or whatever it is, should be all right. Should be. As long as there's not too huge a difference between the water in the tank and your water out of the tap, or whatever water you're bringing into the tank new. Uh, ooh, a grid remineralizer. So a lot of people like um, Seachem's Equilibrium. There's other people that use, like, salty shrimp, uh, whether depending on what they're trying to, what type of shrimp they're trying to keep, but you could also just use it generically as a remineralizer. Um, the Seachem stuff's really, really efficient. A lot of people use it, even, uh, like, Green Aqua, those guys use Seachem. It's a really, really good remineralizer. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Hard to be wrong, but for guppies, you might need something a little harder instead of something quite as soft. So there's that. All right, I'm going to give the first thing away. So if you're entered, you're entered. Let's see if this works correctly. You're going you're gonna to do it, Nightbot? Can you do it? Oh my goodness. Igor Anonymous does not subscribe to this channel. I don't, I don't know if I can give you something if you don't subscribe to the channel. Just saying. It's not a requirement. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, Igor, here's what I need you to do. Uh, Igor, I need you to tell me in chat if you're in the United States. And if so... Congratulations. You've won the Aquarium Co-op Town. If you are not in the United States, you're going to need to email me regardless, and I will get an Amazon gift card going your way. <laughs> All right? So that's bentley.pasco at gmail.com. Just shoot me an email. Uh, we'll get everything worked out. Don't worry. No cost to you. Everything's... Everything sent to you. Nightbot be tripping. That would not be surprised me. I was going to say, e Igor is here all the time. I would think you're a... Nightbot... I... The robots lie, man. Come on. <laughs> mm. Mike from the Fish Tank Barn. You actually have a really good... If your subscriptions are set to private, they're not going to know. <laughs> they won't know. Um, don't worry. We still got the hat. That's why I almost dropped it. This is next. A few more minutes. And just a heads up, guys, Dr. Black, 66, coming up next. Coming up next. So, give him some love. All right, cool. Igor, then we'll, uh, I'll need to get shipping information from you, and I will get the towel headed out your way. Uh, I probably won't be able to ship it until next week, but I have some time off next week to get it your way. It's a nice little Thanksgiving present, so to speak. <laughs> night, night pot, you're adopted. <laughs> Uh, okay, there's one more question I want to answer before we uh, we end this bad boy. Uh, okay, make that two. Sandy Cheeks, uh, will Redfish, Bluefish be getting your Rainbow Fish at some point? That's up to him. Um, so far, he's looking more on the Nano Fish side and not so much Rainbow Fish. But if he wants to do Rainbow Fish, maybe. More likely what will happen is for Rainbow Fish, I'll work with Bob Steenfot. Um, just because he is a Rainbow Fish dude. And uh, we've, we've already kind of talked about it a little bit. It's just a matter of... It's a long, that's a long, longer term game. <laughs> All right, Mr. Singh, you got this question you've asked a couple times. I want to make sure I get it for you. Two questions. 
Cheater. <laughs> what explains Ludwigia cross lucustris? Ooh. Leaves growing small leaves curved downwards. Um, so smaller leaves is likely either really intense light and not growing for a long period of time. So like trimming the tops and replanting them over and over again, the leaves will slowly get bigger and bigger. Curving downwards is almost always a minor calcium deficiency. Curved leaves tend to mean that there's just uh, they're lacking a little bit of calcium. If they're staying small, regardless of that, and you're not pushing a lot of light at them, um, they could they could be not getting enough of some of the micronutrients overall. Uh, so they might be getting f regular regularly good macros, but. The curve tells us there's a little bit of that calcium, which is a micro for them. They're not getting enough of that. There might be a few other things in there that they're not getting enough of to get that full, robust leaf. So I would look at getting some additional micros. You could use something like uh, Seachem Trace to give you some of your trace elements. Uh, there's other ways to do it, too. If you're doing, like, the EI method, add a little extra. Should be fine. Should work itself out. Number two. How much trimming can Ludwigia arcuata take? No CO2 in a 30-gallon heavily planted tank. Interesting question. So, I would argue that you only want to trim a stem back so many times before you've, you've basically kept it so low that it doesn't have room to propagate new growth anymore effectively uh me personally i found this out with pogostamon uh octopus which you know you have to trim a lot faster than you will with that ludwigia arcuata i could trim a given stem of pogostamon three to four times depending on how high i left the first trim and then kept trimming afterward before it got to a point of where i needed to rip that stem and its root structure out and just replace it with one of the trims and let those trims grow in you don't always have to rip them out but eventually they're just going to stop creating additional plant life and they will die out and sometimes it's just easier to remove it ahead of time to give yourself the space okay <laughs> mr singh not all robots lie <laughs> Nightbot is going crazy on Clyde right now. What are you doing, Clyde? It's <laughs> just screaming, <laughs> screaming at Nightbot. <laughs> oh, woo, woo! Night, Nightbot is fake news. <laughs> okay, Priscilla, your question, and then we give away the hat. I have more algae in my tap water tanks since we had the fires. Could that be the reason? Nothing else has changed. Yes. So, um, there is a high likelihood that you have additional nutrients, probably carbon, just because you're talking ash and things like that, but you're going to have some excess of something that's going to affect the water supply a little bit. So, most likely... You are dealing with something because of the fires that's getting into the water supply that is still at a safe level for humans, right? And human consumption is still safe, but you're going to see that effect. So, uh, and yeah, it could be like potash or something like that, but a, a great example is this, right? The area where I get my water from is called the uh, Seuss Creek, right? It, that's just the name of the company, not the actual creek itself. There is a creek, but... The, the water systems they use, there's two main watersheds that Washington uses as, as its water supply that's fed by glaciers. One of them has very basic, soft, almost nothing in it water, right? Really great for plants, really great for discus. Toward the summer, those levels start getting low. And as they get low, they pull from a second watershed that has different water parameters. And once that happens, they typically need to add a small chemical compound to protect the pipes. And what happens is that chemical compound adds a few extra things into the water. So almost always, the same time of year, 
roughly April, I tend to see hair algae outbreaks if I haven't been like really, really diligent in monitoring my tanks because for the first few water changes, there's some extra stuff in my water that's not normally there. And I've gotten so used to it that I just kind of do this and I know that in a month it'll be gone, <laughs> right? It's one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, it sucks right now, but in a month it'll be gone. So yeah, very likely that's what's going on. If you have close to RO in Colorado, almost guaranteed there's some extra stuff that it's safe for humans, the levels that it's at, but it's affecting your tank parameters. Fun times, right? Okay, let's do this. We got, a, we got a hat to give away. All right, last chance. I'm going to give you guys like a minute. Hashtag co-op in chat. Make sure you're entered, which means I got to wait like two minutes because of the delay. While I do that, I will answer... Now and know me? Man, I probably butchered that horribly. Do you still like the Fluval Plant 3.0, as in the light? Might be getting one. Yes, I love the light to death. I actually... A friend who got out of the hobby had quite a few. I bought every spare light he had that were either 36 or 48 inches to go with some tanks whenever I can do my garage. Um, whoop. I uh, haven't seen many competitors that have a good light in a full day cycle. So I would say the closest as far as like doing really nice timing is probably the AI Prime. There is a newer version of some of the other lights that let you do some stuff. And if you have, and yeah, if you, if you entered before, you're still entered. Don't worry. Um, there's one of the newer, um, Kessel lights does something similar, but they're really expensive. They're so crazy. Yeah. It's, I, I, I think the Fluval is the best bang for the buck out there. The only thing I want to do is I want to be able to test the Aqua Sky to see like how it compares and whenever I can, I will. Hopefully, Fluval will send me one. <laughs> but uh, if, you know, if I have to find one used somewhere, I will. Okay. Do, 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 do. I think, I think that's enough time. We'll give away the hat. Uh, Dr. Black, are you pretty much ready to go, buddy? I just want to make sure, because if I need to go a little bit longer, I can. So wait for that to go through. Bam. Nightbot. Tell me. Tell me, Nightbot. Carrie Phillips. Ooh, doesn't subscribe. Can't be. Probably has him set to private. So, Carrie Phillips, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to respond in chat. I need to know if you are a United States resident or not. If you are, you have one. One of these. A beautiful Murphy hat. Because the co-op hat I want, I already have. Okay, Carrie's a chat. Carrie, are you in the United States? I need to know. You in the U.S.? Because otherwise i got to arrange something else. Regardless, Igor and Carrie... Perfect. Send an email to me, bentley.pasco at gmail.com. If your uh, email does not obviously point to who you are, make sure you go like, hi, I'm this person. And then uh, I'll, I'll verify it one way or another. <laughs> I'll figure it out. And uh, we'll get everything squared away so that I can get these shipped out to you. That being said, pretty sure guest is delayed. All right, so I'll take a few more minutes, but I do have to go down for dinner here shortly. Shortly, shortly, shortly. Congratulations to our winners. Um, every once in a while, I might do something like this, just if I get some random free stuff, you know, or if I just feel really nice. Probably toward Christmas, I will do something, because, you know, I'm a nice soul. That's what I do. Uh, S. Have you ever used anything after trimming plants for healing or cutting the repair? Nope, just fertilizer. <laughs> um, yeah, plants don't really need it. I haven't found any plant that's like so fragile that when I've clipped it, if I've clipped it correctly, they've needed something like that. But yeah, no, I, I really personally haven't. Uh, 
Uh, Gary Duncan, what do I think about Phoenix Lights? I like the original Stingray. I had a Fuge Ray, so the Planet Plus Fuge Ray, it's a little more red, for a while. Um, I replaced it with the JCNP light. I actually like the JCNP a little bit more, even though it's not as much light. I just like the Spectrum a bit better. And, and yeah, there's that too. I mean, a lot of people email me. I'll, I will figure lots of stuff out. Don't you worry. I do work in tech for the military. <laughs> hey, <laughs> just a thing. Um, aquarium co-op snow scrapers. I didn't even know they had one. <laughs> if they really do, that's that's crazy. That that's a that's gotta be some OG thing because I didn't know about that. Uh, herp diversity. Any trips for trimming Pogostamon octopus short enough to carp it? No. <laughs> I've never tried. I always wanted it long. I like it long and whippy. That's why I like octopus. Although right now I'm not keeping any. Um, but yeah. So I <laughs> I don't to get back on Phoenix. I don't like the 24-7 mode of the 24-7 lights, but I think they're overall okay light. My big problem with them is for how much they cost, they give you a horrible, 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 horrible warranty. Like, why would I pay the amount of money it costs me to get a 24-7, which, like, I'm just going to go look right now on Amazon real fast, right? Uh, Phoenix, 24-7 Planet Plus. If I want a 24-7 Planet Plus, that's the 48-inch model, right? Which is what I typically use is 48 or 36 let's go 36 a 40 breeder right it's gonna be a hundred and thirty dollars off amazon i'll spend the extra what 40 bucks on a fluval 3.0 to get better controlled light spectrum a timer i can completely control and a what four three year warranty five year warranty yeah a yeah, three year if i remember right I would much, much, much prefer something that controls via an app where I can control individual light spectrums to a percentage, right? This is just, it's just up and down with a Phoenix. And there's only red, green, blue, and white. Where, like, I have multiple whites I can control. I have a much longer thing. I can control the exact time. All, all this stuff. Like, pro mode is so powerful once you understand it. <clears throat> It is incredible what you can do in pro mode if you really want to go crazy. So yeah, there's that. Mark Flip 206. Had, had I heard you live in the same area as Susan Creek. <clears throat> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually in I'm Kent, Washington right now. Uh, which I've, I've lived here for seven years now. Six years? Seven years. Seven years. I, math is hard. Uh, let's see. We'll do, like, last couple questions I see here in chat, and then we'll, uh, we'll be done for the evening. Folks, don't forget to email me. If you do have questions after, feel free to email me, bentley.pasco at gmail.com. Feel free. Feel free. Shadow from Tacoma. What's up, man? Not far away, man. Like, 15, 20 minutes, depending on traffic. Do, do, do. All right. Pear tree. Do you think farming Pogostamon octopus and guppy grass in a 20 gun towel are decent options for profit tanks? Um, so guppy grass is really hard to ship. But if you're dealing with locals who want easy to deal with plants, I love Pogostamon octopus and I love guppy grass. They're great plants. They grow fast. They're effective. One of the best parts is they're super beginner friendly. They're very easy to teach a person who has basically no experience with plants. Like, hey, all you got to do is plant this thing and give it a little bit of fertilizer, and it's going to do great. And it's going to help filter your tank. It's going to do all this stuff. It's great. They're, they were, when I used to keep those in mass, my best sellers. Because like every person that came through liked the way the plant looked. You know, I would tell them it's the easiest plant I own. Sold. 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 Easy, easy, easy. I don't get much time to do that anymore, sadly. But when I did, sold like wildfire. Uh, Fishy Mailman, I think they had one way back in the day, not on the internet. All right, good to know. Good to know you. Look behind you, on the wall, behind you, on the wall. 
I'm, I'm so confused, asked Barlow. I'm so confused. I mean, other than, like, my koi painting that's back there that my mom made for me. I, I get confused by some of the people that post in chat sometimes, whether they're trolls or not, but, you know, you do you. Anyway, folks, thank you so much. As always, it's an absolute blast. Feel free to, to shoot me emails. I'm going to try and uh, make Nightbot not such a jerk next time. <laughs> Nightbot went on a, on a crazy timeout spree. <laughs> uh, for those, Igor and Carrie, congratulations. Congratulations. Enjoy your your free co-op merch, courtesy of the Aquarium Co-op. Technically, I guess, sponsored, because they gave it to me, and I'm giving it away, because I'm, I'm that kind of person. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about breeding? Shrimp, clown loach, and a pistogram and a 20. You won't. Clown loaches, to get them to breed, have to get to a certain size. They need a lot of room. And the loaches will eat the shrimp, and so will the epistogramma. You're, you're like, asking for... And, and that's probably, like, a, a joke question, but... You just, you're just asking for Thunderdome on those poor shrimp. They won't last. Anyway, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome. Check out this sweet thing. Go see Dr. Black afterward. He'll put up a sweet, sweet live stream. We'll go spend some time with a barky corgi. Bye now. Yes, YouTube.